You wanted to resolve chaos. That's a good job. And it just amazed me that like people could do like, that. Like this is way too complicated, I'll never get this. I, I like the idea of it, but. My parents played music, and so there was always sort of an encouragement to do music. But I remember going to see Huey Lewis in the news and definitely thinking, like, that's a good job. Like, <laughs> like, as far as jobs in the world, like what those guys are doing, like they look like they're having a lot of fun. It was at Oakland Coliseum at their peak, and I loved the band. And I remember thinking, like, that, like if you could do that, you know, and at that point, you're only aware of, like, oh, my friend's parents are doctors, my dad works in escrow and like has a suit that he wears and goes to work every day, but like those guys, that looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and already there had been some encouragement in my household to do that. So I remember thinking then that that would be good. And then I remember I started writing songs around then and my, uh, my uh, parents were really helpful and encouraging of that. We got a piano, some friends of the family uh, lent us a piano and um, my mom and aunt and uncles were all over for a family thing, and they could all sort of, they were playing uh, Heart and Soul. Uh, Heart and Soul. Wait, have you heard this story before? No, but that's just like the famous. That's the one that everyone can play, right? Yeah, so they're playing Heart hands. and Soul. And I remember being, I was, I was probably like in third grade or fourth grade, and just watching the keys on the piano move up and down, and just their fingers, like the fact that they're, they were making these keys go up and down and how cool it looked and it and it sounded cool and it looked cool and it just amazed me that like people could do that I never I think at that point I'd never really seen I definitely never seen someone play the piano I don't think mm. Mm. so and I just remember thinking that that I gotta be able to just do that like that's amazing I had a guitar at the house that I'd gotten in fifth grade but then I played a little and then didn't really get in it. and in seventh grade I was like getting back into music and I kind of wanted to play um, drums, and my, but my dad was like, no, you should totally play guitar because then when you like go to parties, you can pick up a guitar. Yeah, and I think my dad always admired the guys who yeah. would show up at the party and like sit down at the piano or pick up the guitar and like play. So it might have been that he just didn't want someone playing drums in his house, but, like, but that's what that's he told understandable. me. understandable. <laughs> yeah. He was like, no, play the guitar. I, you know, I, was, I kind of was like brought up with music around the house. Like, having my older brother and older sister and my parents even like they they had instrument there's recorders and there was melodicas and there was we had a piano for a lot of my childhood so, uh, I was always around it my older brother played baritone horn and uh, I think like I when I was five or so like I was put into the piano lesson thing I didn't really like it very much because it like I would show up unrehearsed and I just felt kind of bad about myself, you know, <laughs> like like this is way too complicated. I'll never get this. I, I like the idea of it, but um, but I think but kind of like uh, when the like, pressure was off and when I was just home alone or whatever, like and the piano was sitting there, I just like would go up to it and sort of mess around on it and just enjoy the resonance and the sound of it, you know, and like play little melodies or mix stuff up on it or maybe try to play heart and soul by ear or something. And um, I mean, that was like a, that definitely got me excited about the idea of, of like getting into music possibly. And then I, but I think the real aha moment was maybe seeing Zach at the talent show in seventh grade. Mm. But I, I remember just, uh, I remember seeing the band and just being like, oh, that's pretty sweet. And I was already kind of like sort of priming myself for wanting to do something musical and and it was at that age too, you're sort of like, you know, there's kind of like the, some people would do both, but there's like the, the athletes and the musicians. Like, you know, as you kind of go through junior high and high school, it just starts kind of like, you, you start to yeah. choose a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, you don't yeah. have to choose, but I feel like that for some reason in the suburbs, that's what was going on. Yeah, there's not a lot of choices. Just clicks, you know, yeah. paths. That's a huge yeah. part of it, that, that whole thing. And I kind of, I love sports and I loved, being athletic and we played soccer together and yeah. so I just saw the music path just a little more clear the path was a little more it's clear. It's funny because it is kind of a gradual like you kind of get on the path but like one foot like and I re even remember like playing football like my freshman year of high school and then like breaking a bone really quick and then like I remember the coach being and then like trying out for the musical because like 
And I kind of wanted to do it anyway, but like, I don't know. You know, The you adults st- around you are sort of nudging you yeah. in, in directions and you kind of don't even know like it all the time. Like the coach knew I wasn't gonna play football, you know? Yeah. I remember like him saying like, hey, I heard you tried out for the musical, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm encouraging you. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's a big thing with all, with all of us talking about this at those ages though, it's like you're like finding your place. So yeah. like, I know we've all yeah. talked about this a bunch before. Like for me, music was definitely that, like being in junior high and like, like it's finally getting that age. Like when you're a little kid, you don't, you're just not, at least I wasn't self-conscious of anything when I was like in elementary school. And then junior high, it just gets weird. And music was like a huge way out of the weirdness for me. I remember I was in a musical on Fiddler on the Roof and this like, uh, uh, like panel film. It was like, I was like acting. Oh, yeah, right. It's like panel stage piece of like stage prop I think film. I was there maybe. And I like improvised through through it and like stayed in character and like continued the show and then somehow, because the audience knew that like the props fell apart, like somehow it just made everything better the, the look, yeah. that like, I got played up on it, you know? Right. And it, yeah, and then I remember like afterwards going outside and, and like having a profound moment of like that that was what I wanted to do. Like whatever it had happened, like right? The, the, the performing. Uh, yeah, you like, wanted to resolve chaos. I wanted to like resolve. Being a jam band. Yeah, sort of, <laughs> you know? And then I remember it, at that point, I was like, I would tell people I wanted to be a rock star. And then I remember getting to college and seeing Evil Farmer play. And at that point, like there wasn't, a, in high school, it's like we, you know, we were like a, a great band in high school. Yeah. You know, we had like cover lots of songs. We had original songs. Like people in the high school told us we were great. We could sing along. We got to college, and I remember seeing Evil Farmer and being like, "Oh my God! Like that's a great band." Mm-hmm. You know, like those guys are really good musicians, and like I want to be a musician. I don't want to be a rock star. Mm-hmm. And I made a delineation in my mind that it was like more uh, that to be a musician was the thing, not to be the rock mm-hmm. star. The that performer. the rock star was like something else. You know. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I made that delineation, and then that kind of you know, became more about like other styles of music, like from jazz to like mm-hmm. ethnomusicology and like musicals and like all that could be kind of part of like being a musician, whereas like being a rock star feels more like you gotta be like, you know, this is what I do, like, you know. There's something a lot purer about being a musician than being a rock star. And it's pretty amazing when they're all there together. I wonder if they'll rail ride. Every time I had to get a drink, I had to look directly at them. <laughs> you ever feel like you just need to like give them a time out and send them to the room? They just, it's, it's, it's funny how over time parents become like children, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cut. You ever feel like you just need to like give them a timeout and send them to their room? Our, our parents, we're lucky that, um, <laughs> we're lucky that we all have our parents. Yes. Yeah. yes. All eight of them or whatever. Like, yep. Um, it's pretty fun when they're all there together. And it's pretty amazing when they're all there together. It is. They don't interact that much, though, too much. Yeah, they kind of have their own little... They get their own space. Space. A lot of times they have their friends there. Yeah. Their friends there. And your parents like to go down in front. My sometimes. dad likes Ride to go the rail. Front. My dad's a rail rider. Oh, yeah, yeah she gets, they true. go down front, yeah. Lebo and, She's and Cindy should hang out. That's true. <laughs> my, my mom gets jealous of the other parents going up front because she doesn't feel quite comfortable to do it, do but she kind of wants to. Wants my dad will go from my dad. Uh, exactly. My dad this morning, he was loved the show last night. Yeah. It's just like the, the sound. It's yeah, just the way it's like, changed. I, just can't, it. I can't imagine. I can't believe I just, how, I just can't believe how all the much things. the sound. <laughs> my parents <laughs> don't. I mean, they've seen the band since when we were thirteen. Yeah. We were practicing in Zach's living room. My parents uh, see our band a lot less since Estelle was born. Yeah, because now they're Cause now they now the baby for, Yeah, like they would have been there last night, right. but but they're gonna come tonight. Cool. I wonder if they'll rail ride. Sometimes I try to like. <laughs> uh, sometimes I get like a little psychological trip of like trying to please the parents. Andy by, Bernard style. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah, by sure. by playing like a safe set list or maybe not being fully liberated myself. Yeah, if you're getting into a super heady, dark jam, and then I look up and see one of your guys, or my parents, just like smiling back at us, it like takes me back to like seventh grade, and like I I get like a little self-conscious. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so last night, my parents were right behind me, 
I was watching. And, and, every, and time my I, every time I would, every time I had to get a drink, I had to look directly at them. <laughs> yeah. And then I just would like break it, <laughs> like yeah. a weird break. So I was just I almost was ignoring them. them. But then, and then, and then, and then simultaneously feeling like like a bad son for not being like hi, yeah. <laughs> like I'm on the stage. And then uh, I was watching. And them. then, and then that whole hot tub thing where like we let the reins go, <laughs> it's just like petering into like. But then your dad I loved it, it, huh? In the morning, you know, I almost didn't want to like make any eye contact with them for fear that they. We're gonna this morning, you know, and then they were just raving about how great the show was, and I was like, oh, I guess it was okay. I kind of thought like it fell apart. It's <laughs> <laughs> super experimental. That's yeah, cool. You like that? It, it, it actually that did, and that's what was cool. Guess, you know, yeah. But. Well, they're so supportive. Like, yeah. Uh, it's not that different when you know, like even like if Jessica's there or something, you know, you just yeah. wanted people you want to impress. Like you were saying, your yeah. guitar teacher was there. Yeah, and like, my like high school guitar. teacher I get a little self-conscious there. with certain people around. I think I feel the most comfortable when I'm playing in front of like anonymous. Uh, a certain amount of st- they're strangers, but yet I can tell that they're like into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, for me, the weirdest thing I think the most comfortable is like the more people. A lot of times it's just yeah, more anonymous. Cool. Like, like some of those big shows, like the one stuff we did in Brazil. I found that just, yeah, just so a sea comfortable. Of, sea of people, sixty thousand like people, whatever. Then the it's ocean just or like yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's so powerful too. That it, there's a lot to like bounce off of. I mean, these hometown tours are crazy because it's like it, it has like wedding kind of vibe. Yeah, totally. You know, parents, friends from high school. Last night I saw people I haven't seen in twenty yeah, years. Yeah, You know, yeah, that I went to grammar school with like my whole life. So. I feel like we do. We cater to some. Requests sometimes too from like from family, parents. yeah. Really? Parents and well, your parents. My parents don't request anything. My parents don't request anything. They don't really request anything. Like my parents like to hear me sing, so sometimes I'll kind of like, you know, like sneak an extra song in the sneak set a list. Steve song in there just because they're there. Or... <laughs> you do do that. I thought I suspected that. I mean, it's. I mean, <laughs> it's not like. I mean, they like to hear me sing, so I I would do it anyways. Maybe. I sing like every other show, maybe. Maybe. So it's sort of, okay, I'll, I'll sing this one because they're there and I'll, the next one I'll skip. Right, I think right. my mom's favorite song is Jaden, so she probably just wants to hear that every time she comes, but yeah. I don't really she play that anymore. Tonight? I don't think she wants to hear my songs too much because sometimes they're like, <laughs> they're, talking about like they're racy. Blues. Yeah, <laughs> they're a little racy. She loves they're them. They're a little blue. She loves them. That's my take. I think she does too. She gets a thrill out of it. Oh man, <laughs> cut her, that. Her cut son, that. Who, he, did he just say that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would like implode every, there's just not enough space. It's sort of like a double-edged sword sometimes. It's like it, it can feel sort of sometimes like you're cheating. From 02 to like 08, it was kind of like that a little bit. I think we've always been pretty, pretty, uh, pretty uh, big on that in a, in a really healthy way, like everyone having other projects to work on. I feel like, to me, one of the things I think is really cool about it is it takes pressure off of ALO to be yeah. everybody's everything. Because um, back in the older times, we didn't have other projects, and it would be like weird because like, might, I might have something weird jazzy thing I was into that yeah. maybe you guys didn't want to do and then I would be all, you know, like, oh, I, I'm not getting to express myself. Yeah, from that, from <laughs> 02 to like 08, yeah. it was kind of like that a little bit, yeah, 07. It's kind of like, okay, everything, all my creative ideas have to be funneled through. Yeah, ALO. so we're all trying to put yeah. everything put a into ALO, yeah. A little bit creatively. Yeah, but so I think it's been rad ever since people you know, do other things, then it's like ALO can be what ALO is. Totally. And then, oh, if that doesn't fit, cool, I'll just I'll do it with someone else, yeah. you know? It's sort of like a double-edged sword sometimes because like, it does sort of relie- relieve mm-hmm. that sort of, uh, those like personal creative things. You can like, you can go out and play with other musicians and do your own thing, make a record or whatever, and you're sort of, the pressure is sort of relieved so that ALO doesn't have to be everything. Yeah. But at the same time, like the scheduling and like the logistical coordination right, of like yeah, having multiple bands really kind of, it can also sort of impede mm-hmm. the momentum of ALO. But 
um, I think in the long run or the big picture, I think it's good. You know, yeah, it's hard to tell. It's hard know? to know when you're when you're frustrated by scheduling. You're like this. Side projects have to stop, but then when yeah, you're frustrated yeah. by ALO, you're like, I need to do a side project. I don't think, I really don't think we would still be together if no one did side projects. So. I think it would like implode every, yeah. there's just not enough space for everybody's yeah, ideas. Yeah. It'd be interesting someday to explore side projects as a band, you know, yeah. like have the, the band as a side project or two. Yeah, a different face. Or we something. become a different band or, you know, yeah. Back up with just one guy of the band or something like that. There's always been that. I mean, we've always we've always had the, like let's back up like whether we were backing up Jack in college or backing up uh, Tara Van Van Devender. Van Devender yeah. in Georgia or there was always Reed like Fale. we always were like Reed Fail. We were always like let's back up somebody else. It always felt like we wanted to be we wanted to have like a fifth member kind of do I their thing. I think we still need to make that album. Yeah. Like the album yeah. where like yeah, friends. We just, yeah, friends, like friends we just back up all our our friend Singers, songwriters, It'd be awesome. Shouldn't be too hard. What have you learned from? Um, I feel like Steve, you maybe have the most. You've had the most side projects. Yeah, you have all sorts. You a lot of. You know, from the mandolin orchestra to the Gramblers. A tree called Simon. A tree called Simon. Wow. Even back in the day. <laughs> that was since high school band. With Trevor. With Trevor and Pete Binkley. Oh, and, really? Yeah. I remember in high school when Zach, you joined Paragon. Oh, yeah. Paragon. The older and, guys. And you were just the lead singer. He didn't play. Did, I played keyboards. He played keyboards. That's oh, right. guitar. But the older, we were sophomores and the senior, something like that. The seniors, like, recruited Zach up to the, nice. the majors, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I called him up. <laughs> then they... And they booted me at that. <laughs> and I think that's when I called you. Got when, Rob I, you know, when I booted. joined Tree Called Simon, I think because of that, maybe. No, no, no. No? no, no you're no. off by like, uh, that was like my freshman year. Uh -huh. Tree Called Simon was uh, when you were a senior. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, because they were younger. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, that actually is that, because I remember that band, Uncle Funkle, oh, was yeah. totally like Uncle that. Funkle. was a rad, uh, uh, I remember for me that was fun because we had our band together it was more like you know doing songs like we were like doing our originals and covering Same. journey and stuff and then uncle funkle was just good. like a power trio and we yeah, would like just rock. jam and get like crazy it was kind of like a little punky and a little Fun. little like black sabbath -y at times <laughs> yeah you know, it's just i remember that was i remember even at that time, it kind of serves the same way as a lot of these side projects. It was just a place to like go crazy on guitar. You really do. I every the thing that as much as like it does take away from ALO schedule wise, uh, the side projects are infinitely like you learn so much yeah. when you play with other great musicians. You know, and then you bring it back. And in then you too. do, and it's like it, it can feel sort of sometimes like you're cheating, but it's not like that with music. I really feel like the more you yeah. play with other yeah. people, just the better the whole thing gets. You know, it can feel like the relationship, like cheating on a relationship. Yeah, it feels but like it, yeah, I don't it's think not. It but it's like it's hard to get out of that mentality sometimes because there's so much sacrifice involved in a band. You know, that it's like... It's like an open relationship. Yeah, it's like so-and-so's, you know, <laughs> jamming. Honest. <laughs> Steve's jamming with those guys, and like, what are they doing? It sounds like fun. I wonder what... <laughs> you can play keyboards with them, but don't write any songs for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the... I mean, No it's, more secret songs. <laughs> I get kind of... Like, I do definitely, like... We, we all do it at different times, but I've definitely been, like, dipping in lots of different bands, and... Um, and it's definitely like you get you're in demand by a lot of different people and you're inevitably going to let some people down mm. you know which yeah, is I which is see. like the can't say yes to everything that's when the, you can't, the you soul can't, is split at a certain point that's you it. just can't you know? say yes yeah it's, your relationships become so vast that your purpose becomes you know for you it always seems pretty clear though like i feel like Yours is pretty clear. It's like if ALO has something that just comes first. I've definitely made it clear what my yeah. priorities are, but like it's never really come up before. But I'm still like, I no, know I'm letting down, time. you know, big light or whatever. Like rehearsal I day. guess rehearsal. Yeah, I'm more just up. thinking like gigs or studio time. Or I mean, if he has a, a gig, you, you know, yeah, and you, you have to, Gigi a commitment's first. a commitment, yeah, it's you know. It's nice when there's, I like the side project where there's like a sub option. Right. So, so they're not like just sitting around waiting for yeah, you to yeah. be ready. Yeah. They can like get somebody else and make their thing happen with or without you. Right. But I love being part of those things, especially when my schedule's more open. Right. But I also miss being home, I mean, probably like everybody yeah. at a certain point. It's nice to be home.
starts as a slight tingle in the toes. That's a little too freaky, or it's a little too crazy for me. Yeah, you can't look for a definitive meaning of that. But really, orchestra is the key word. How exactly does it work? It starts as a slight tingle in the toes, and then it bubbles up. It sometimes manifests as like a physical movement. Sometimes it's just a sort of like, whoo, whoo. And then sometimes it's just sort of like a nudge to yeah. a friend. Sometimes it involves like a uh, dance party, a, you know, drooling, drooling, snorting. And sometimes it's just like standing there. Like last night there was a girl right up front who was like, who went morose. <laughs> she went morose? It was like a, a morose girl. And it was, I mean, it was, she seemed to be I really- I think I know you're talking about. Really oh yeah, over kind of near Dan. But, you know, you know, but, but- uh, <laughs> She didn't want to say it. But you know, you don't want to say, but, but you know, it's like, I th but I, it's I like, she, I, she I seemed really too. into it, but it's like different people, different, you know, what kind of animal was that? Yeah. Like a, like an owl I or was it a deer in the headlights? Or was she it? was up, if it's the one and I'm thinking if she was the one who was up on the front the whole time. Yeah, really. So she was obviously clearly, there for a reason. Like yeah, she, clearly she into it, but it. her, her way of liberating her animal. Dead. Some people do she like a dead, wild dead. animal thing, you know. Sometimes that can be freaky to Some people who get up front. Some people play possum. I think sometimes those are the people who are actually the most into it. The people who are just so into it, they aren't even responding. But because like you wouldn't stand there all that time if you weren't like totally into it. But they're they're kind of freaky to play for sometimes because <laughs> you like not getting anything back from them. Liberation, like, was that you know, cool involves that? freedom. Yeah. And so freedom is this weird boundary where it's like, okay, let's all be free. Like I'm gonna tear off my clothes, or I'm gonna start throwing things at people, or yeah. I'm gonna bite your leg. You know, there's so, definitely a, a line that gets crossed sometimes when people are a little too free. It's not fun they for freak, anyone. That freaks me out too. So how do you, how do you, you know, is the show a safe place to liberate your animal? Sort of. I mean, there's some animals that might not be tolerated. Yeah. <laughs> you know. The thing is to inspire participation, but you don't want to yeah. make people feel uncomfortable if they don't want to participate. Like, I want people to feel like invited and like, let's have a, some sort of mixing of, you know, yeah. human. I don't if know. you want to dress up, dress It's unfolding. Up. I'm not sure what it is, yeah. yeah. It's unfolding. Yeah, they don't. We, we encourage don't. expression, though, I would say. Definitely, like, there's expression. no doubt that, that, that ALO encourages people to come to the show and be expressive. And However we don't want to alienate like anybody. We don't want people to feel like they, like it's a weird place to go. No. Well, plus, you know, you're trying, <laughs> like, that you want people to come. You want people to come, <laughs> but you don't want people to be like, oh, ALO, like that's a little too freaky or it's a little too crazy for me. Like their fans are a little nut nutty or whatever. Well, I'm sure there's people who think that. Yeah. I'm sure there's people that went to one show and was kind of like, whoa, this is too intense. And every or, town brings out a different sort of That's true. Sort On of the, the East people. Coast, like, it's a way more low key. I mean, yeah, it's like it's any true. gathering of humans, you know, you, people you go to a football like game, and there's like the people who've painted their faces, and they're like yeah. chanting, and then there's people who just watch the game, you know? There's, the there's people that write the down the uh, points. Yeah, there's people who are like... I, I saw was, some of that last night. I was kind of tired last night, and I was thinking about like when you're at a baseball game, and like someone will be like ripping on like one of the ball players because they're like, they're... They're tired. Hecklers. Like, <laughs> like, start running, dude. And I was like, he probably is tired. <laughs> you know? right. I couldn't believe that. Like, the first time I went to a, a pro basketball game and I saw a fan doing that. Heckling, yeah. Yelling at this player who... Pissed. Was a veteran. I mean, he was one of the best guys to ever play the game. And this fan was literally 20 feet away from him. I think when you watch basketball on television, it looks like the scale looks bigger. But you can, you're close. Yeah, yeah. And he was just ripping this guy up and I was just like that's so music rude. fans just do it that's in chat so rooms. <laughs> yeah, they do it in <laughs> chat rooms. Yeah. Well sometimes you're on stage and they're like, play something funky and you're like, oh damn. Yeah, I thought was that was like, funky. Yeah, that was. <laughs> it was like, come on Steve, you can't play bass anymore. Come on. I know. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Or the <laughs> sit down. Or sometimes it, like you stop and like you take maybe a little longer in between songs yeah. and someone's like, all right, one, on, two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to count you in. Keep, keep the energy up. Keep the energy up. That's funny. Man. But yeah, liberating the inner animal. I think it's a lifelong process. I always think like, are you liberating yourself from your inner animal or are you actually setting your animal free? And like, is there a, you know, yeah, I'm still not clear. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's both. It's all of that. It's probably why we different at different times. 
change the name to ALO at a certain point. <laughs> yeah. Just to like relieve ourselves from that, having to explain it yeah. or understand because it Because I think it is inexplainable. It's like something that's unfolding and, it, and it's a little bit different, yeah. you know, each time. Yeah, you can't look for a definitive meaning of that. Yeah. You it tell, doesn't exist. You tell people the full name of the band, though, sometimes, and they're like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I think on a historical level, kind of funny. people have been liberating their inner animals at, you know, festivals and, like, shamanic gatherings. Yeah. Like, there's a real tradition All of it, whether time. it's, like, putting on your buffalo helmet and, like, becoming an animal, you know, like in, like... The animal spirit. Yeah, animal spirits, Connecting totem animals. poles. I mean, it's a... It's something that goes back much further than, than we do. And a lot of focus gets put on the animal liberation part of the name, yeah. but really orchestra is the key word. It is the key word. Because it's, it's, animal, it's liberating your animal, but in a controlled way. Yes, <laughs> the orchestra way. is composed, yes. you know? Yes. But I like that how we sort of can teeter between the more well, composed it's, and, it's and the like more free like depends on right, right, improv the piece yeah. who's the conductor it's like trying to stop the stampede that's that is you yeah. the animal and the orchestra they so, kind of fight each other yeah yeah the, the animal's dance, feral they're battling dance, for the control dance. the animal's feral the orchestra is anything but feral yeah, they wear they wear tuxes yeah. with with bow ties and one and yes. two, and, and three. they watch their con one conductor all the time you can almost imagine like a bunch of animals like trying to yeah <laughs> trying to be an orchestra. trying to be an orchestra and they just like snarl their hands are too big off there. Yeah. a little chicken <laughs> like wanders in he <laughs> throws his violin so, on the ground it's sort of uh, another <laughs> word for like a circus we try to get back to like sort of some of the core things that made us all really enjoy the band you can just start playing a beat and i can come up with guitar or bass all of a sudden we got a song so maybe that's the indulgence that i'm thinking of. and in a way that's like maybe in a, i guess in a sense the most disciplined we've ever been Right in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what we got yet. Oh, we got something good. We got a yeah, good, yeah. a good new record. We baked a cake. It's the ALO LP four, and it's slated to come out in the spring of 2012. And it's it's going to be it's going to be epic. I have no doubt about that. I think that it'll it'll. Uh, harken fans back to an early time with the band. There's lots of things that actually, it's nice that we're discussing all this stuff now because there's lots of things on the, I think with the album we try to get back to like sort of some of the core things that made us all really enjoy mm -hmm. the band, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 10 years ago. Some like of the inspirations. Some of the inspirations, original. like old soul music and, you know, rhythms that make people dance and uh, having fun. And, and we definitely went into the recording of everything trying to think like, how would this feel to play live? Whereas a lot of times, mm -hmm. When we go into making yeah. an album, we just put on headphones and just kind of trip out on the music. I think yeah, this was yeah. the first one where we've been kind of concerned about the live yeah. aspect of it the entire time. You know, I keep thinking like, would this song feel nice to play like right after they drop the balloons on New Year's Eve? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And in a way, that's like maybe, in a, I guess, in a sense, the most disciplined we've ever been yeah. with making an album because it is really easy to go into the studio. There are, there's no one else around. Yeah. And you just get wrapped up yeah. in your own you kind real, of yeah, inward insular band world and to I think really stay mindful yeah. of the people who come to see us is been it's cool. And it's I hope, not easy to do. I hope the fans love it because I feel like it's the most in my mind, like I've kept the fans in there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You know, you know totally. Like, yeah, it's been a, a fun process. It's been a fun process. We've been doing a lot of like writing of songs in the studio too, which is that's we. I feel like on other albums we've done. Uh, it's it's interesting. I feel like each album has successfully had more of that though, where yeah. this one having the most of it. Yeah. Like uh, Rose and Clover had a couple, and Man of the World had like four or five. Now we're like at like most of the album really. I think it's like more that. collaborative. Collectively, yeah. I think we just kept kind of liking those songs a lot. Yeah. Like we kind of related to them as a yeah. group, you know, like. Plastic Bubble or, totally. or Roses and Clover yeah. or Lady Loop or Shine. Yeah. And I know that's another thing too when everyone's like doing their, their side projects or like their, and even not necessarily their side projects where they back people, but when you do your like your solo band stuff, well, not solo, but you know where you're like getting people to play your songs. Um, 
one of the things that, that I think it's so, I think we all agree is so special about ALO is, is that like writing process together and that collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. So as we've been doing more like solo project things, it, I feel like at least on mine, it makes me appreciate the collativeness of yeah. ALO more. And like, so if we're doing an ALO album, let's like dig in on the collaboration. It's more unique maybe. There's other, yeah, there's other yeah, times to like bring your songs to people and show to them. Here we, we can just like, you know, you can just start playing a beat and I can come up with a guitar, or bass, all of a sudden we got a song. Yeah. Like yeah. that's really cool, special, you know? And I remember early on thinking like, what is, yeah, what is it that makes ALO unique? And like, let's focus on that. Mm -hmm. You know, what is, what are the things that like only our little mm -hmm. four piece can do, you know? I think that, um, What's our special superpower? I feel like the record too, a little bit was like, it indulged like some of our, like I feel like we can be indulgent sonically, like maybe in past records, like really put the headphones on and like indulge in like the soundscapes, whether they're slow or fast or whatever. But um, I feel like there's sort of a different indulgement and in, or indulging indulgence indulgence yeah. in this record, like to indulge like the yeah maybe more of the live stuff. Just maybe that's it. But for some reason, I feel like we've avo like in the past avoided long jams. Like yeah. these songs have long jams that. Like, or go till 10 minutes long, and we'll see how we yeah. edit it down or sneak it back or whatever, but we just let ourselves play. Yeah, so, that's true. And I think we're pulling stuff from the end that got really good to the middle. Right, and as we edit now. So maybe that's the indulgence that I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. From the, from the get-go, we didn't cut stuff out that maybe the Yeah, we're not right. over-editing, maybe. Yeah, no, that's a big thing right there, I've noticed, because when, when, when I was messing with Bark of a Tree the other day, um, just that, and that is actually one of the shorter songs right now, but still the intro, we like recorded it double, and it was like, oh, we'll cut it short. But then as I was working on stuff, like having that doubled intro, it actually was like kind of kind of nice to have something to work with there. Whereas I feel like in the past, we would have just from the get go, oh, let's cut that off, because we know we want to keep it tight. So yeah, it's, it's true, like, like letting those things be on there as you work, then actually develops into like parts of the tunes, rather than cutting things off before they get a chance to, to like, to exist, really. We'll have to see, too. I mean, it, it, as, as we speak, it, it does feel like, uh, you know, we'll have to see in like another couple of weeks, like what it comes yeah. turns yeah. into. Yeah. Well, know, we have a thing now, too, where we have more music than we can fit on an album. Yeah, so it's yeah, going to be interesting to see what we, what we favor in our cutting, because that'll steer what the album actually is. You know, as we like take that extra 20 or 30% even that we have to, that we're not even going to be able to put on. Good, good practice and patience, too, I think, on this record. Mm -hmm. Like letting the jams unfold, just being in the studio and letting the tape roll and like just seeing what happens after you play a groove for mm -hmm. five minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think none, no one was in a hurry to like just figure out the song. It was like, let's just let it, things evolve naturally. It's cool. I like, I, I like this record a lot, I think.
Never been performed before. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Yeah, that was fun. Good job, brother.